This week, we talk about how to calculate how much to eat. Also, we'll take the mystery out of leaky gut and check in to see if I'm any less fat. Let's get into it. What's up, Ming? Same shit. Different day, you? Oh, I'm feeling good. Yeah? I'm feeling really good this week, yep. You'll why, see, I, I, why hit an, four? I hit another new weight loss, new record low for me. Oh. I'm feeling leaner. Good for getting you. Getting stronger. I started tracking some of my, my push-ups and unbroken chin-ups, too. Am I boring you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. As we were just talking about, sleep's been... So, a, a premium lately, and I haven't been getting any. Well, you should probably listen to our episode on sleep and get some more. Yeah, no kidding. It's important. I'll send it to you. All right. It's a good one. I should be able to find it. <laughs> God, I'd hope so. Maybe it's so boring it'll put you to sleep. I've tried. And that would work. I've tried a bunch of, like, have you started listening to um, Ryan Holiday's uh, Who does? Stoic? I have not. Oh, it's fantastic. Is that, what but is that a go to go to sleep listen? Mr. Holiday's voice will definitely put you to sleep. <laughs> He's very just monotone and very relaxed. Very 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 NPR. Yes. Like Pete our next guest is Pete Schwetty. I like it. <laughs> All right, well before we get into our stuff this week, I saw this infographic here that Gary Taubes posted and I thought it was kind of relevant to our uh, type 2 diabetes discussion, and I'll just read this for the people listening here, but if you're on YouTube, you can read it yourself. Um, Do you think she'd ever get off insulin? Wolver asked rhetorically. Never. So my colleague said to me, I know you have a long waiting list, but can you see this patient? She's in my office, scared to death, crying. I saw her the next morning. I explained to this young lady what she had to do, how she had to eat, and she started that day. I just saw her for her three-month follow-up. Her hemoglobin A1C was down to 6.1, no longer in the diabetes range. She had lost 25 pounds. When I told her she was no longer diabetic, she was crying. I called my colleague over, and she started crying. I was crying. I literally felt Everyone's like, crying. Yeah. I literally felt like I had cured cancer. This girl has her whole life in front of her and is not going to be spent on insulin managing a chronic disease. So that's a quote from Gary Taubes' book, The Case for Keto, and basically just an example of, you know, the joy that someone feels when they reverse a previously irreversible chronic progressive disease like di- type 2 diabetes is always thought of. So I thought that was really, uh, I think it's important to hear these personal stories from people. It's just a story. Yeah, it's just a story, exactly. But it's, I think that's super motivating. I know when, whenever I'm getting into a subject, when doesn't matter what it is, you know, learning any anything about any subject matter. When you hear someone's personal anecdote, that always gives me a little bit of juice. Mm -hmm. You find the same thing? Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's just an old picture of me. Yeah. (laughs) That gives me juice. Right. The before. I I, I found that old picture that I showed you last night and shit, I had no problem fasting today. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Zero. Well, yeah, I mean, the before and afters are so huge right. in fitness. Yep. And, I mean, if you're sitting there as a you know overweight person and you see somebody's before picture and they lost a ton of weight and they're feeling healthy and looking great, that lets you know it's possible, you know, and that's huge. Well, so, it makes you, you look at that person and you go, they're no different than me. Exactly. It's it's achievable. Yep. If, if they can do it, why are they... What's so special about them that you couldn't also achieve this? They got shamed enough. <laughs> right. Yeah, whatever it took, <laughs> it worked. No, so. the, most, you know, people, the sensitive type, they get mad at me when I say, and, and I'm proof that it's not a short-term um, motivator. Yeah, how long did it take? And It took forever. That picture that I'll you saw, find that, that, picture, that was 2013. And then how long until you were reasonably fit, would you say? Like what was the duration? There's always there's been ebbs and flows. It was a couple of years or what? yeah, yeah. It was three or three or four. Yeah, probably, so you're not that talking was thirteen, so probably sixteen. Yeah, so you're talking a three year transformation. I mean, that's no small commitment with hiccups. Right. There's road bumps. There's roadblocks. There's detours. There's 
stressors in life and there's shit that just gets in your way, but you stick with it. Yep. And but well, to my that? original point, my motivator and people say, "Well, that's short term. That's not going to last." Bullshit. It was anger. I was pissed off at myself. Right. Oh, that you let you get yourself. Yeah. Get that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know what? It, whatever works. Whatever. For me, yeah. I was pissed off. It yep. happened. It, the same been motivator in football. Mm-hmm. You're not getting it. You're not getting these plays. You're not getting through. You have to get through that that block, or you have to, whatever. Right. You can't. Mm-hmm. Well, give me a, one more try. Watch. Yep. And uh, I just get pissed off and. Yeah, well, when you've been coaching people, what have you found? Do you have to kind of tailor it to the person? A one million percent. So, like, some people respond to rage. Some people are like, watch me, I'm pissed off now, or shame, or yep. some, some people need to be treated more gently. Some people, you... Positive, aspirational Some people need the... I have to, depending on which phone call I'm on, I have to be Tony Robbins or a drill <laughs> sergeant. <laughs> or or uh, what's his name, the, the Ditka? Right, right, right. That uh, or, or, or was, the guy from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, that drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah. Really usually Arlie em- Emmy. Are you Emmy? shitting me, pile? You can't do one fucking pull up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Sometimes I got to do that. Yep. Um, but it all depends. Some people you collect more bees with honey than vinegar, and some people need you to kick over the garbage can at halftime. <laughs> I can do both. It's hey, you're. You can adapt. That's good. Um, here's another tweet I saw by Ted Naiman, and it's funny. You just bought his book. We'll have to hear about how that is once you read it. Yeah. Um, Ted Naiman is one of these guys where I find myself agreeing with him more and more, but he kind of likes You better to, be careful. He likes Ted to, likes vegetables. He likes to push buttons. Well, he basically oh, says- he loves to push Prioritize buttons. protein, and then his- and then pick, pick an energy source, carbs. Pick a feel. Yeah, he's like, uh, eat fish and then eat a potato. I'm like, Ugh. but that doesn't, but I, but I, I'm low carb, but I, that doesn't work. You know, it just, yep. it triggers me. But he you know what he doesn't say? Eat a piece of fish and then eat a potato, but you know what he doesn't say? Put a bunch of Put butter, butter on, on top of the right. potato. Yeah, he's saying, pick, prioritize protein. Well, and also by prioritizing protein, he's basically saying you're going to eat less of energy no matter what because well, you're, you're going to be full yeah because you're the pro- satisfied go for protein first and then just by definition you'll eat less of e- either carbs or fat and as a consequence that's going to reduce your waistline and he's so, super lean oh and he's ripped he's ripped you know so, he can, but wait pick get your protein yep and, and pick then an pick source. your feel pick your feel god i swear i've heard that before i know from ted Naiman. i just said it <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's we're not reinventing the wheel. Well, it's different from keto because keto is like prioritize fat and then protein a lesser amount and z- almost no carbs. You know, so it's just a different ratio of all these things together. But I, but I pound it home. Pick your fuel, fat or carbs. I don't yeah. care. Pick yep. one. Can't be both. Yeah, and I don't know how. I don't know who the people are that can eat a steak and just a potato. I'm not that guy. That I sounds can, gross to me. I can because I eat it super rare. Or even at most medium rare, and there's a ton of blood on the plate. Your potato? How do you like your potato, sir? <laughs> medium rare. <laughs> Crunchy. <laughs> but then that blood with the salt in the potato, uh-huh. oh, it's like gravy. It's like au jus just for your spud. Yeah. Nah, it's good. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is if somebody handed you a big old potato and said, all right, go nuts, eat as much of this as you can. That's about, a diet. It's a potato diet. Well, yeah, because well, one potato in, you're like, um, you're pushing the plate away. Yeah. You're like, I'm tired you're of full? This. No, I'm just bored. So you're not hungry. And I'm tired of it. Right. Yeah, I'm sick of this freaking yeah, boring-ass potato. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but you you're think, truly not hungry. It, right, because you think of potato, carbs, you know, just pure starch and carbs. Straight but if you, if you don't eat too much of it. No, if you don't put sour cream and bacon on it either. Exactly. It doesn't make it hyper palatable. So he's a guy that triggers me definitely. But I had a pretty cool tweet here and said, um, in my opinion, the best diet for Alzheimer's prevention is whatever diet makes you the leanest and especially the most physically fit. This could be anything from vegan to carnivore. See, and I was triggered by that. I know you were, but I love this guy. That's what I said last week when we were talking about, talking about type two. Mm-hmm. What did I say? Uh, Just get lean and everything else lean. takes care of right. itself. And that, yeah, and that's through all these syndromes and diseases and afflictions that we're seeing. That's the one constant. You know, people that are more lean have less instances of these occurring. And Alzheimer's is no different. 
And that, they pick the one person, like like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon that they heard was ten percent body fat and had Alzheimer's. Yeah, well, this, and then I want to reach yeah, through the computer and punch him in the face. Yeah, none of this is. There's always outliers. Of right? course, there's outliers. Now here's he's got a graph here, and, it, and basically it goes from low fitness, medium fitness to high fitness, and then the the risk oh, or the yeah, occurrences the of cardiovascular fitness. Well, the occurrence of dementia within those three populations, and low fitness has much has probably ten times the amount from the high fitness group. Well, actually, it says here twelve times, twelve x, twelve x risk reduction with high level of fitness, and then medium fitness was in the in the middle. So. Basically, no matter what your age is, the more fit you are and the leaner you are, the less likely you are to develop Alzheimer's. Well, that's huge. Not to mention type two diabetes and you know uh, all the other afflictions, syndromes, diseases we've mentioned, cardiovascular stuff, everything. You know the metabolic they make up the metabolic syndrome, right? Uh, they're it's all tied into this excess body fat. That's why you need. Well, I don't want to squirrel, but I'm going to. Go for it. I think people are beginning to appreciate my squirreliness. <laughs> if not, screw off. <laughs> I don't care. If not, squirrel off. Squirrel off, yeah. I can help you. Uh, relative. What the hell's high fitness? What's medium fitness? Right. What is it? What's, yeah, I don't what's know how the they... function? You can't measure effort, so... I don't know how they define this. It, it, it's perceived effort, but that perceived effort is, well... Perceived, it's perception of the person performing the, the function. So if their effort's high, that's according to them. So somebody who walks around their block and gets and just has that feigned exasperation, <laughs> right? It's like, dude, you just tied your shoes. <laughs> well, whatever. I'm high fitness. I'm yeah. in the point one too. So are you? Well, I, I assume this was measured and studied. Oh, with oh, I'm not saying I'm not poking somehow. holes. I'm just saying, what was it? Right, what yeah, was considered know. high? Right. So yeah. So how do you practically apply this? Right. Yeah. Because you because know, if you don't want to end up in the low fitness group, okay, what is it? What are the requirements? What's the threshold to be in the considered high fitness? Is it a certain low body fat percentage and a certain strength? You know, f for your height or whatever. It's probably got to be something like that. Um, but no, matter, so. no matter what, try to get stronger. Try to get leaner. Right. It have to be. <laughs> right. This could be anything from vegan to carnivore. Yeah. Yeah, he totally is just tro well, trolling you, you hard. You can get lean. <laughs> you can get lean being a vegan. You can waste away to nothing. There's a I got <laughs> there's a there's a guy on on Twitter today. He said So I heard I I, I wasn't on Twitter. If Mel's listening. <laughs> we stand on Twitter all day. <laughs> no. As far as you know. No, but anyways, this guy said it's all about leanness. I've thrived on a fruit, the 80, 10, 10 fruit diet. Oh God. And which full disclosure, I don't know what the hell that is, but Me either, but it's gotta be some type of prioritizing yeah, you fruit could, or whatever. Well, I'm telling my story. You should rain man that up. Um, <laughs> they had, uh, he said 80, 10, 10 fruit diet. And I crushed my 5k and I PR this and I PR that. And I said, and then right underneath this, he goes, I've never felt better, blah, blah, blah. And then right underneath his tweet, I put, yeah, and you can't do three push-ups. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> so guess what? I was right. Yeah, I mean, just imagine the lean muscle mass that's there. They, and they can't argue. Yep. They're like, well, would you rather be healthy or a bodybuilder? Why is that always the extreme? Well, <laughs> well I would say somebody who has no muscles is not as healthy not as someone who muscle, does. Not having muscles. So here's the 80-10 80 10 10 diet. It's a low fat, raw food diet, promises to discover a sustainable lifestyle that leads to weight loss, better health, and disease prevention. So, low fat, raw vegan diet by D Douglas Graham, a raw foodist, retired chiropractor, and former athlete. A former athlete because he can't lift his own body weight. So, he's no longer an athlete. <laughs> so, it's saying the optimal diet provide at least 80% of calories from carbs. With no more than ten percent from protein and ten percent from fats, oh, so it's that so it's triggers the, me hard. It's the antichrist of keto, right? <laughs> yeah, or carnivore for sure. Wow, that just like for me, I mean, you'll definitely be lean. 
I mean, if you're just eating because how like again, hand, how many potatoes can you eat in a sitting, right? You're gonna drop body fat for sure. I guess that's the one positive of this diet. But then also you're in in my mind, all your lean muscle mass is gonna start to atrophy because of the lack of protein and fat. Yikes. I don't like it. I st- some of them will say, then they'll cite all the Instagram accounts you can go to to listen to or watch or follow that are bodybuilders and they're vegan. I still think they're frauds. I do. I still think they're taking whey protein in the back closet. Oh, yeah. The, like all the Game Changers guys. I mean, well, the funny thing is, on that Game Changers movie, most of those people featured in that movie aren't even vegan anymore. Or weren't. Yeah, or the, weren't at the, all. It was just the terrible. Diaz, the, the MMA guy. Yeah. Is that right? Diaz? Nate Diaz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was like the whole time they said, said, fuck that. Nate eats eggs all day long. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just misrepresented. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to take down that movie at some point. Um <clears throat> yeah, so the 80 10 10, that's kooky. Here's another meme I saw that was kind of funny. And for those listening, it's a, a guy grabbing a giant belly and it says the guy well, giving you nutrition is sad advice. enough a kid. Oh, it's a kid. Yeah, geez, it's a kid. That yeah. is crazy. It looks like about a 10 year old. And then uh, below that, it says the guy giving you technique advice, and it's got a weakling with no mu- no muscles. Arnold would laugh at him. That's 80, 10, 10. Uh, he's, yeah, he looks like a fruitarian. Exactly. So, yeah, it's this is one of those fields where you can't you can't fake it. You know, you you could go up to the front of a class as a uh, art history professor and yeah. be in any shape you want, right? But if you're at the front of the class of a fitness class or you're giving nutrition advice, you better not be overweight because they can smell it on you. They can see it on you. You can't bullshit people. I try to not be too judgy. Um, I, I'm not always that successful, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> I try to not be, and I try to put myself in their shoes. God damn it, it wasn't that funny. Um, but I can't help myself when I see an overweight trainer at the gym. And the first thing that pops in my head is take your own class, asshole. Practice what you preach. Do as I say, not as I do. And I can't not think of that. Right. I just, all I did was type in fat minister of health, which I find incredibly ironic and if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see the image search. Oh, God. So there's plenty of overweight ministers of health. And, you know, again, these people are giving out advice for people to be healthier. I mean, uh, sorry, just even if they're completely smart and they know about diseases and stuff, or, you know, if they know the science of behind disease and stuff, obviously they're not, they haven't figured it out for themselves. Or and it just optically, it just they should think about that a little. It, it right? just it, yeah. I I don't get it. I mean, the person giving out health advice should probably be in shape a little bit. As this Belgium one is, oh my god, scary. It it, it, go, it goes back to what I said: the do as I say, not as I do. Right. I I can't. I can't. I'm not. I can't get on board. Exactly. I, I can't. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, and how could you go into work every day as a f- overweight trainer? I mean, wouldn't you just feel like a complete fraud? Yeah, that's my whole point. Yeah. At, at what point do you have to look the part? I don't know. I don't know. I think you, it's, you, you have to. It, it, I struggle with, and, and it's my short-sightedness. It's my, it's my thing I have to deal with. It, it doesn't make it right, but I get judgy, and I get... I don't know. I get very short-sighted maybe right. even. But when I walk when and I go into a CrossFit gym mm-hmm. and the portion of the class is Olympic lifting and the coach who is coaching the Olympic lifts is a shitty lifter. Right. I, some of that's I too, struggle with that. Some of that's just – it's hard to find good personnel too. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. But yeah. – and plus, all, every coach has their strengths and weaknesses, too. I agree 100%. I'm not saying it's right. I know it's not. That's why I prefaced it with. Well, maybe they're I'm, just teaching noobs, too. Like, Sure. They're not going to teach the advanced Dewey guy. But I also remember 
um, the old phrase when it comes to teaching those who can't, those who can't teach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes those who can't coach. Ooh. Bomb right. thrown. He's throwing, dropping bombs today. All right, let me show you this other. Go ahead at me. <laughs> Come on, Dewey. Give, give us some comments. I'm, I'm amazed we don't have more negative comments in our YouTube. I mean, you've heard of YouTube videos just being a dumpster fire of hate and it's stuff. Because nobody's listening. All we have is three is like <laughs> likes. It's our friends. Yeah, we need to get some people in there saying some you know why stuff. We can. You know why, getting, you know why it's people. not like that? It's because we. Surprise! This is going to come to a huge surprise to some people, but we suck at social media. Oh, that, maybe that's it. If we do. Maybe for once... for the show, I'm great in fucking flooding people's timelines with my own shit. <laughs> but the fit and furious. Yeah, so chirp, chirp. Here's a challenge. Button, here's a challenge. Says, Somebody get in there and argue. Yeah. Somebody that's, get in there and argue with Dewey about some of this the, stuff. That's what yeah, I'm asking you. Bring it. Well, here's another uh, tweet Don't, I saw. Just careful when you tug on Superman's cape. <laughs> oh, well then. <laughs> right, here's another tweet from uh, this guy. His name is Philip Ovadia at iFix Hearts. He says, I'm a heart surgeon. I'll be the first to tell you, to beg you, to do whatever it takes to never, ever need me. Please stay off my operating table. Fix your metabolic health. Please but, kick on the comments. I can't not. What are those 62 comments? <laughs> See, now that that speaks to what we were saying the other day about, you know, the American Diabetes Association, their goal should be to not have to exist anymore. Yes. But it's not because every every entity wants to survive. Just it has an inherent, you know, need to keep going. Well, because there's people at the top who are feeding off of it. Yeah. And there's I mean, six-figure salaries. and Right. So I love I love hearing this sentiment from a heart surgeon saying, "Look, a perfect existence for me would be not to ever have to do any of this." What's the What's that guy say? He says, "Fix your metabolic health." That's his main point. No, the next guy. Oh, Doctor uh, Anthony. Beck. Therein resides the problem. My colleagues say this kind of stuff. However, they have no idea how to do it, nor do they build programs to teach it. This is empty barrel virtue signaling. There's no money in prevention for them in the medical industrial complex. I like never that. Guy. Allow. I like that. Yeah, guy. that's true. I mean, I'm sure if you follow work, him, see, you suck at social media. You're, <laughs> who? Anthony G. Beck. Boom. He's followed. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I'm sure if this, this heart surgeon, if he works at a hospital, the administration is going, do more heart surgeries. Yeah. We make shit tons of money. Do billable, more stents. Billable do, time. Do, yeah. I mean, they just want him cranking. The worst thing for them is him sitting in the break room on Twitter posting stuff like this. Right. They're like, what are you doing, dude? You're killing all our business. You need a handle. And I'm, <laughs> you, need a, you need a disguise. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm sure hospital administrators, uh, I mean, their goal is to make a profit. You know, to, I don't know if hospitals See, what have makes shareholders Twitter, or whatever. What, but. what makes Twitter great is if Phil replied to Tony. Hmm. He did. Find ways to get beyond the limitations of the system. The system won't change. There is no incentive for it to change exactly. Physicians and their patients must work together and demand change. Yeah, there you go. I need to read this later. Yeah, we'll have to follow that guy. So you need to keep, like it or tag it or follow that guy. Yeah, I'm going to follow this guy too. So Philip Ovadia, I fix hearts on Twitter. So I thought that was just cool to hear though because, you know, you don't hear the guy's – no. In the uh, standard medical Never. Uh, world saying this kind of stuff. Nope. So that was very cool. All righty. Um, how's your push-up challenge going? I'm sore. And then I signed up for that bench press rowing the challenge. Rowing? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Let me look at my numbers here. I tested it yesterday. I can look at mine too. Yeah, I want to see where you're at. Okay, because we're now we're on the 14th of April, so we're almost halfway through the month. Look at us. I've done sitting on our phones. <laughs> I've done nine hundred and sixty one push ups. Um I've so done just shy of halfway. Five fifty. Oh, that's it? Yep. Dude, I'm smoking you. Yeah. How's your vest? <laughs> Why nobody told you to do that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> they paid for it. That's right, yeah, because you challenge him. Because you're doing it with, what, 20 pounds on on your back? Yeah, but I did this push-up challenge. 
or this. So the reason I'm behind is because I don't want to overtrain leading into this contest, the rowing, this challenge. Rowing yeah. Bench press. So it's going to be a heavy bench press with moderate reps. Um, and I've tested it a couple of times. Then you just have to blast through the pushups after that contest is over. Yep. What? Okay. And it's this weekend. Oh, okay. So you still got a couple of weeks in. Yeah. See what my my approach has just been slow, the slow and steady. Forty in the morning, forty at night. Yep. Because I can do and four, the tortoise wins the race. Yeah, I can do unbroken but forty. We so, all end up just on a, like the Saturday after this thing. I'll do like five hundred. Yeah, you're just gonna be suffering it out and banging yeah. out in one day. Yep. Yeah. So for me, that's been working. Um, but I think you know actually the unforeseen positive of this challenge is I think I'm going to keep doing it. Really? Because it's not killing me. It's doing 40 in the morning, 40 at night. And I'm keep still doing my dumbbell workouts every other day and still sure. doing push-ups, which yeah, I think increased. it's time for you to or man, man chin up, though, and start getting some weight. Oh, I am doing weight. <laughs> no, I mean real weight. Hmm. Why are you so mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's uh, the Mission 22 April push-up challenge. You can still probably jump in and donate to that. And, There's uh, no donations for the other challenge. It's just you root me on and one. cheer against me. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know if we'll you have the last be live. Or, echoes. Maybe maybe we need to do a Fit and Furious that's a YouTube, thing, right? live. YouTube live. YouTube live. From, yeah, yeah. yeah and then we'll definitely find out what it is, and we can throw our camera. No pressure. How long, it would, how long does this thing take? Well, I've been testing it. And I think I can do the row in sub eight minutes. Okay. And then it's bench press. And then tomorrow the flow comes out. So oh, the okay. flow is speak for how it's going to go. So right. row and then X amount of time to start your bench. So it'll probably take like 15 minutes, half hour or something? Tops. Okay. Because it might just be row, two minutes, bench. And then done. <laughs> Right. That's it. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll check it out. So Maybe we'll go live that day. And I test it. I, I, I don't think I'm going to do very well. Um, well. That's the spirit. I'm a realist. <laughs> this isn't no Pollyanna bullshit. <laughs> um, if it was, well, I think I'd shine if it was 2,000 meter roll for time and then two minutes rest and then build to a one rep max bench, hmm. then I'd be okay. But repping out your body weight, that's not my jam. Right. I'm like one to three rep guy. Yeah, right. Well, not that's... 15 at 215. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> that's, but that's what I did. I did 215 and I did 15 reps. That's good. I don't know. There's going to be some guys who throw up 220 and Is do, this a do national it 30 thing? times worldwide. Oh, worldwide. So then you could log in. Yep. an interface you're competing against everybody. Oh yeah, there's okay. a there's a leaderboard app on your phone and now I know you're somebody that's motivated by that. You love the competition piece, right? That's the only reason I do anything. <laughs> right. So for you, and th that's what kind of what the un unforeseen benefit of this push up challenge for me was like I would have never done four. I would have never doubled my push ups in a day. Right. Without that. Right. So well, now what if I stick to it? I mean that that's what got me to the, another level. Overuse, Which is cool. in, overuse injuries could pop up, but yeah, just pay attention to your body. Yeah, if I can do forty unbroken comfortably and haven't strained anything, and I feel good, and, right? You know, why not keep that level up? Yeah, progressive right. overload, right? So mm -hmm. it's either more reps, more weight, or but, some combination but of those. Eventually, overuse is going to creep in. Yeah, because it's just that repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. It's like playing. It's like getting. Carpal tunnel or tennis like elbow. Getting, yeah, or tennis elbow from when you're a pitcher. Oh, yep. So if you get right here, if you pitch too much, you can't. That's why, like, when you're a kid, yep. you have an inning restriction. Oh, You can't yeah. throw and throw and right. throw and throw. Makes sense. So eventually we're going to have to get you on a grown-up <laughs> hey. GBT. I got I got a squat rack now. I got a barbell. I know. You're, it's legit. I'm getting there. How about a, how about a bench? Yeah, I got a bench. You so do? I, I can bench on the squat rack. Yeah. Yep. So I, just I, lower the J hooks. And yep. Yep. Give her hell. Yeah. So check and check out YouTube because I put a install video of me throwing that that uh, PRX rack in my tiny little seven by eleven room. So and it fit in there. So really well. cool. Cool stuff. Um, okay. So we got a term we're going to define this week. Oh yeah. And it is leaky gut. This is one of those terms where 
I would hear it all the time, and I literally had no idea what the hell it meant. I assumed, now I won't, you know, I don't know where you were on this, but I assumed it didn't mean literally leaky gut, but it kind of does. It does. Which I was like, really? It's one of those times when you're playing trivia with your friends, and you try to logically deduce what the answer might be based on the question. Yeah. If you do that with leaky gut, you're probably going to be right. Right. And I just thought it was, you know, uh, a term that didn't literally mean what, it, you know, I thought it referred to something way more scientific, but it kind of means what you what you think it means. When people say, hey, Dewey, what's leaky gut? It's like when you have turkey dribble in the bottom of your garbage bag and there's a hole and you run into the garbage. Right. And then all that turkey juice is getting all over the carpet. Yeah. It's, okay, I'll just read the definition here. What exactly is leaky gut? Inside our bellies, we have extensive intestinal lining covering more than 4,000 square feet of surface area. Gross. When working properly, it forms a tight barrier that controls what gets absorbed into the bloodstream. Because that's really where all the nutrients, your small intestine and to a lesser extent larger intestine, that's where the nutrients go into the blood from your stomach, right? Bingo. Um, so look at okay. you. Yeah. Get the brain on you now. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so an, un, an unhealthy gut lining may have large cracks or holes allowing partially digested food, gross, toxins, and bugs. It literally says bugs to penetrate the tissues beneath it. This may trigger inflammation and changes in the gut flora, which in parentheses says normal bacteria. That's the gut microbiome. Right, that could lead to problems within the digestive tract and beyond. The research world is booming today with studies that show modifications in the intestinal bacteria and inflammation may play a role in development of several common chronic diseases. So I've heard the gut referred to as the second brain. Sure. And that all kinds of craziness goes on there. And it's even the, you know, the carnivore guys, the keto guys. The the body. (laughs) Right. I like that. But... Almost nobody has a real handle on what's going on there. It's all, a lot of Not speculation. Everybody. I think I do. Well, it's so much speculation. Well, I mean, I'm talking about purely scientifically. They don't know. People. Like they've only. I heard one thing. I was listening to a podcast about this, and I heard they only identified like, I don't know, 20% of the p- potential bacteria that are in there. So oh, they, they don't know I how see to, what you're saying. They don't know how to define. Like space. Right. They don't know how to define what a the gut flora, like you said, the microbiome. They don't know how to define what a good one should be. Right. So they just know that if you have this leaky gut issue um, and a lot of problems can occur if you don't have it figured out, but it's kind of still vague in my mind, like what figured out even means. How do you improve it? How do you diagnose what's wrong? Either you're putting in a ton of time with these terms of the week to have the well, yes, perfect you. segue into yes, today's you, yeah. topic. <laughs> Cause you did. Well, it all, it all ties together. Um, this is just random. If it happens to work, it, it, it worked really, really, really well this week. Um, no, and this is the reason when I start people on, when they start working with me, they're like, what do we do? All right. What are we going to do? I'm, I'm used to eating like 6,000 calories a day. What's my new 600? 900? What, what's it going to be? 1,100? Dude, you're 200 pounds, 6'3". No. What is it? 1,500? No, you're going to eat as much as you normally do, right. but you're going to add 1,000 grams by weight of plants every single day. And that's in order to help with this? Fix that. Okay. You will fix that. Instead of beer and pizza, you mean? Right. Plants not in the form of pizza crust. No, no, <laughs> raw. And if your gut is over 46 inches. Right. Circumference around the waist at, above the belly button. We're going to just, and if you're not super active, mm-hmm. I'm giving away all my secret sauce over the air. No, that's right. On the air, whatever. Um, Not much fruit. Oh. We're, we're going to keep the. Because of the fructose, yeah, we're right. going to keep that. If, to unless really you're going to, unless you're running six miles a day, right? Then fuck it, fruit the sugar down. We'll have fruit all we want. But if your idea of of cardiovascular training is taking the garbage out every Friday because that's when the truck comes, <laughs> or reluctantly checking the mail because your wife it makes you, yeah, yeah, we're going to minimize the fruit a little. Or if walking upstairs is Hard. effort, effort, 
Yeah. Or when you put on your shoes, if you go. Ugh. Oh, that's funny, dude, because even when I was at my, when we started the show, when I was 190, whatever, putting my shoes on was hard. And I wasn't that fat. Right. I'm in comparison, but you, you've been there. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, hell yeah, I have. I've been over, put one shoe on, and that's. <sighs> yeah. You need, a, like, a rest time between yes. sets. Between I, sets. And I joke about that. <laughs> if you, if, if you. One of my jokes I say all the time is if you have to take a break between shoes, then the BMI <laughs> applies to you. Oh, hell yeah. That's very true, man. Mm -hmm. ah, Preach it, baby. Doff my hat. <laughs> so in, increased intestinal permeability, leaky gut. So literally shit is getting through the lining. That's freaking Future gross. shit. Yeah, future shit, exactly. <laughs> But that, that's, I literally didn't think it meant literally that. So you thought it was something way more clever. Well, that it was, or it was just about chemically. It, oh. it, not that like actual food particles right. are going through rips in your intestine. Yep. That's freaking so, disgusting. So man. to lead, to segue into today's topic, so what happens when that food leaks before you digest it? Well, obviously it's not, you're not absorbing the nutrients from it. Right. Yeah. And it's so, probably causing problems elsewhere. Right. But wait, wait, wait. Seco. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Calories in, calories out. Well, I, the calories in, they never came out. Oh, they came out the intestine and went right, right. somewhere in a body cavity and right. started <laughs> fermenting and <laughs> God knows what the hell else. That's pretty freaking disgusting. Right. So I'll put the article, of course, in the show notes. You can read about leaky gut. So, But that was one of those ones I... Definitely when people, I knew it was just something bad. I don't want to get leaky gut, but I had no idea what to do about it. Um, you got to fix your gut but microbiome. Yeah. And it basically says, uh, well, here's and, their recommendation. Contra even he says controversy still exists on whether leaky gut causes the development of diseases outside the gastrointestinal tract. However, it is always a good idea to eat a nutritious unprocessed diet that includes foods that help quell inflammation. There's inflammation again. Yep. You know, big trigger for bad things. So well, that how he stays pretty ambiguous. Yeah, with what those foods yeah, are. He's not saying eat more red meat. Or no, eat, he just cuts it right or, out. Yeah, he's just saying eat healthy, whole, uh, eat unprocessed really? just eat. foods that don't trigger inflammation. Like, uh, that's just pretty eat vague, but food. Yeah, so that was good. It's it's funny how um, I was thinking about this earlier or over the weekend. It's funny how we, now we call foods superfoods. Mm. You know why we call them superfoods? So they can sell more of them? No. It's because they're <laughs> well, not super. They on TV. They're just food. <laughs> right. So it's the other su food like substances that are garbage. Oh, yeah. So right. now actual food has become a superhero. <laughs> yeah. And really, it's just food. Comparison to, to some Cheerios or, right. a, or a donut. Yeah. Speaking of, yeah. I got Magic Spoon this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Two of them are really good. Two of them are really bad. Do you like the fruity ones and the not the chocolate? The chocolate is trash. Now, for those that don't know, Magic Spoon is a keto cereal, right? Ridiculously low carb. Um, but it tastes like it. Yeah. So my it's buddy was like, how is it? Charms. It's my, the, but the Fruit Loops one are kind of like really? Fruit Loops. But but they're not Fruit Loops. No. It's not. It's even. never going to be exact. Exactly. But you have to my buddy said, sacrificing some. Right. And my buddy's like, oh, I've been dying because he listens to Mind Pump too. And he's yeah. like, well, I've been thinking about trying that. You got to let me know how it is. So I even got a shout out from Adam on oh, Mind nice. Pump on my Instagram. Right on. But he needs listening. Hey, Adam. But um, yes, yes. <laughs> why wouldn't he be? <laughs> but anyways, I told my buddy, I said, well, here's the thing. If you crave breakfast cereal, which you do because it's hyper palatable garbage and hyper. you become addicted to it. <clears throat> but – it's going to work in a pinch and it's definitely going to mm -hmm. scratch an itch, mm -hmm. but guess what? You're not in, you don't have to be in fear of your kids sneaking it. Oh, cause your kids not, will spit it out. Cause your kids, I think compared to lucky charms, it's they gross. will spit it out. Okay. Yep. The frosted Cheerio, they're all Cheerios. Right. Everything is a little O. Yep. But there's one that's frosted O's. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'll even like them. See, here's the problem. I why I stay away from that shit though, because it Cause awakens it's $10 the beast. Ten dollars a box. Well, that and it, <laughs> and it awakens the beast. The beast. And they're goes, really, Ooh. really little boxes. The cereal's pretty freaking good. Right. I should probably get some more. I had it with uh, just a, a half. Well, I 
I tested all four, about four boxes. It was a four pack special for 40 bucks. Yeah. Um, but it really, really small box, but I tasted just a little, just a half a handful in a bowl with some coconut milk. Um, and it cleaned my palate, cleansed my palate very well. Yeah, it, it, like you said, between, scratched the itch, but. But yeah, it did. It, yeah. The fruity ones were like Fruit Loops, and then the frosted Cheerios ones were pretty close to frosted Cheerios. Yeah, let, but, us, let us know out there in the comments, do you try to eat things, the keto-approved versions of things that you used to eat, or do you just say, F it, I got to just steer clear. And I, I got to be sober from that stuff. And it's okay to eat those if it's not, holy shit, this is my breakfast every day now. Or if it leads to actual Cheerios, actual Cheerios or other stuff. Right. Like for me, I'm I'm better off if I just eat some eggs, for sure. You know what I mean? Like for me, just personally, because I know like eating that sweet tasting stuff of it. In fact, I heard a podcast the other day where a guy was one of his rules for life, and you know he's a super zero carb guy. He was he he didn't say avoid processed sugar. He says don't put anything sweet in your mouth. That was his one of his main pillars. So aggressive though. Well, it is, but for him, yeah, he, I get it. He's hyper, hyper uh, sensitive. He one time he ate a breath mint, and then he was like practically psychotic afterwards. I mean, he's you know he's got serious issues, right? Yeah. So he's he's got to avoid anything sweet tasting, even if it's gun sugar to, alcohols or anything. He needs to go lay on a couch. Yeah. Well, he, he <laughs> he's one of the hyper hyper sensitive guys that you know is literally psychotic. Well, it's all he, we're all on a spectrum. All on a spectrum. Yeah. So. There's plenty of people that can eat Magic Spoon or chaffles with sugar-free syrup. And, yeah, you right. know, And can pull that off and not go back. The thing is, can you, you know, can you maintain that sobriety, right, you know, from from sugar, with that, or is it just make the cravings even worse? It, you have to feel it out for yourself. You, you got to know. You got to be. Your Usually, own it doesn't for me. Usually, it's like, but that was different. So, there wasn't the carbs. Right. So it didn't trigger. I was like, I tasted just a little small, little handful of each one. And and I, and I was done. I'd, and you didn't overeat. See, that, the other thing too is if it tastes too good, then I have a tendency to keep going. Right. Even if it's on the good stuff, but you still don't want to eat a zillion calories as we're going to get into in our subject. Right. If you're trying to hit a calorie count, it's much easier right. to overeat mm -hmm. if it tastes really damn good. So and it says right on the magic spoon, the boxes, it says not a zero calorie food. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, because people tend to think, oh, I got a keto, like my, my wife used to make me keto cheesecakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which are freaking good. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that's a that's one of the ones you can pull off, and it still tastes pretty freaking good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'll mail, you know, many pieces of that. Right. Because it's so freaking good. Yep. And yes, technically it's keto, and, you know, my macros are good, but then I'm just stuffing it down my gullet. Right. And mm -hmm. way over on calories, so... Would it, I would be better off just not eating it. Yep. Unless you can control. So you got to know yourself and you got to know what you're doing. Well, it's okay of. if you did that and it was just the only thing your birthday. Not clean up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, or Christmas. Exactly. Not Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Not every Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> I make one every Monday. What yeah. are you celebrating? The day? <laughs> it's Tuesday. All right. So we got a listener question that leads kind of into our topic for the week. Um, this is from Joanne and she says, one of my areas of confusion on fasting is this concept when eating that we shouldn't decrease and decrease and decrease calories sometimes need to increase calories. Why doesn't your body consider fasting as continuous calorie restriction and the body will think it needs zero calories in the future when adding calories back, when adding back calories, fat is immediately added on. Why does fasting allow the body to have zero intake but adapts when going back to feeding it. Thanks for clarifying, Joanne. Here's my, I'll give my little opinion on this and then you tell me what you think. Yep. Um, and she's basically saying, because one of the things that you told me that was a light bulb moment right away was you can't operate in too much of a caloric deficit because your body will adapt. It'll downregulate your metabolism and say, okay, we're getting less calories, now we're just going to use less. So the deficit you have to operate in it has to be measured. It can't be too much. But fasting obviously flies in the face of that because fasting is zero calories, right? And I think for me that the difference is fasting doesn't last too long. If you, 
unless you have a ton of body fat, you shouldn't fast super long. Like the most I've ever done, I think is 72 hours, but typically I'll do a 48 hour and then intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think if you were to fast continuously for too long and too often, then your body may downregulate. Uh, but if you use it as a kind of a kickstart or a reset tool, then I think then your body's not going to uh, not going to fully reset and uh, or re- downregulate your metabolism, which is the fear. If you like, let's say you're supposed to operate your tar- caloric target was fifteen hundred a day, and you're eating seven hundred. That's when, and you just do that consistently for weeks, then your metabolism would downregulate, right? Correct. So now that's the right answer. Okay. The right answer is it's not long enough. Not long enough. Yeah. It's so just, that was a quicker way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just you're not. I took three minutes to say that. It, it and what keep and what gets super confusing is the whole time you're reading Joanne's question and then you're giving your explanation. The whole time I'm. Freaking thinking about that August guy who went a year. Right. Yeah. Without the guy that lost 200 pounds or whatever. Yeah. And all you do is eat some mineral or But guess what he did? Minerals. Just kept going. Yep. What would have happened if he did that for and 14 he had tons days? Of store, tons of stored body fat. Well, true, true. Yeah. But, you know, some people might, mm-hmm. but they can still down regulate. But guess what he did? Just kept going. Yeah. So what would happen if he would have went 10 days and then started hammering cheeseburgers? Yeah, we just start packing on, packing on weight. Right. So that's the common misconception is that, A, you can do whatever you want when you come out. Right. You can't. You can't. But that like 48, 72 hours is so short. Yeah, compared to that guy who went a year. Right. Yeah. Well, compared just period mm-hmm. to, 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 to answer Joanne's question, to fly in the face of the conventional wisdom that says you're going to, your body's going to adjust and, and start right. to re- just require less. Yep. Cause our body, the simplest way to explain it is everyone's different. I know that seems like such a cop out mm-hmm. response, but it's so true. But that being different includes your body. It includes your metabolism. So how your body down regulates and when and in what manner depends. Right. It really depends. But from an evolutionary standpoint, there's no debating that your bodies are been evol- from an evolutionary standpoint, our bodies are designed to store. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like so we talked it, about the fast. No matter how yeah. much you eat, yep. your body's gonna always go, all right. We got to partition this. We got to spend this much on function to stay alive. And the rest, we got to, it's like money for our bank account. Yeah, hey, you all your them bills. In, you need some in reserve. And this is the re- yeah. what we have to live on. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do? We're not going to blow it. We're going to save it yep. for when we don't have any more. When the income stops. Right. So our bodies are no different. Yep. But what that looks like for Joanne or for Josh or Dwayne totally depends. Mm-hmm. So there's no... Well, here's the blanket answer. Right. Everyone can go 48 hours and not have to worry about it, blah, blah, blah. There's, if yeah. it were that simple, we wouldn't have a fucking podcast. Yeah, and that goes for <laughs> all of this advice. Right. And that's what we're going to talk about in our topic. And that this is a perfect segue into our topic, which is how much should I eat? So I do find this stuff very confusing because I always thought, well, I'll just eat less. But then you basically said, well, if you're too low – in your caloric intake per day, your body's just going to adjust to that amount. So then I'm like, shit, okay, you know, now what? Like, where do, what do I need to, where do I need to and, be? And, and that's Josh. Right. But I don't even know, like, well, how to or whatever. Mm-hmm. If, if you were 600 pounds, that wouldn't apply to you. Right. You could keep going for right. a long time, 385 days. Like you said, that guy at the conference – pointed to the guy and he said, what you, with what you have on your body, you could run 10 marathons right. and not be in danger. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, you have enough stored glycogen store, or you have enough glycogen stores in your body right now to run, actually it was like 20, yeah, like 25 full marathons. Yeah, so nobody's going to drop keel over if you fast for a while. So that's our topic for this week. How much should I eat? So and This Jen, is such a hard topic. Right, and you know, this, you already kind of give the disclaimer of everyone's different and 
the overarching advice I'm going to say at the front of this is you have to pay attention and track and listen to your body because that's what's going to tell you how to adjust. And that's what I help people do. Right. How do I know I'm in a deficit? Let's find out. Exactly. How do we do that? No, 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 no. (laughs) No, no, no. I'll get you to the movie, but you got to buy a ticket. (laughs) Well, now we're going to give away all your secrets. All right. (laughs) So first step is you got to have to kind of deter, you got to determine what you're burning currently, right? And there's you have two, to figure out what you need. Well, and well, let's start with even take it back a step, like the basal metabolic rate. Okay, so that's so which is what you need, which is what your body will burn at rest. Like you said, if you're in a you're lying in bed in a coma, how many calories per day will your body burn through? Yep, that's with no activity. And then when you add your activity level on top of that added to the basal metabolic rate, then you get your TDEE, right? The total daily energy expenditure. Correct. So that's how many calories are going out fully. And then you have to decide on your goals from there. So is your goal to maintain? I'm at the perfect uh, leanness. I just want to maintain this. I want to lean out, drop some body fat percentages. I want to put pack on a bunch of lean muscle, or I want to... Uh, let's say run a bunch of marathons and you know prepare for that activity. So everyone has different goals too. Whether you should Absolutely. be eating into maintenance, a deficit, or a surplus. And so we're going to talk about how to find out those targets, <laughs> and then how to when you know your target, how to actually hit well, them. Then we have to figure out what exactly. Well, that's a whole other show, probably. <laughs> we have to figure out what your. <laughs> you said depends on what your goal is, right? Well. So we're going to talk. We about have to help you figure out what that goal should be. Yeah, well, right, yeah, because a lot of I'm guessing you found this too. Is that everyone's perception of their own uh, state is well, way off? I've had people say, come to me and say, "I need your help." Okay, what do you want to do? I think I just need to lose 20, 30 pounds, dude. You need to lose a hundred and thirty. <laughs> well, uh, no, no, no. Just stop Wait, talking. Just stop. Just stop. Go get an in body. Yep. And we'll talk about it. Right. <laughs> Way off. Yeah, people's perceptions are insanely off. Um, so let's talk about how you dis- determine what your basal, basal metabolic rate and your total daily energy expenditure are. So there's, like you said, you mentioned the in-body scan. There's the hydrostatic weighing, which I mm-hmm. did. There's a measuring tape. There's your clothes, <clears throat> how they and fit. There's your eyeballs. You know, There's other people's eyeballs. Other people's eyeballs, or you know, take a picture of yourself and look at it comparison to a body fat percentage graph. And then, the, lastly, I put the scale. Right. Lastly. Last, because that's probably you know, it's it's another data point. But you almost have to like do as many of these as you can the to scale, try to get an accurate number. The, I decided the scale is to f- weight loss as the pencil is to the carpenter. <laughs> right. It's a yeah. Exactly. You can't measure without a pencil. Nope. You can't build a house without it. Yep. But you can't build a house with just a pencil. Right. Yeah, and people, we've said this many times, but people put way too much emphasis on on the scale. Way too much. Because you could be dropping, you know, you could be eating vegan and dropping a ton of weight and going, hell yeah, I'm getting, I'm dropping, Mus- dropping weight. Heavy. But then your muscle's going away. Yep. And the scale's dropping and you're like, thumbs up, bro. I'm dropping weight, but if your muscles atrophying, that's not not a good place to be. And so. if you have a lot of no, that's that's squirrel. But if you have a lot of fat to lose, you want to lift heavy, right? You want to fill that skin back in. Oh yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and lean muscle burns more calories too. For so sure. you raise, raises your basal metabolic rate. We're, I was talking to a, a um, to a, a client yesterday, and I said we're almost the same, mm-hmm. same height, build, everything. And I looked at my phone, and by 3.30, 3.45 in the afternoon, I already had 36, 3,700 calories burned. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he has a device. Yep. And he looked at his, it was like 18.50. <laughs> right. Difference in activity level. Nope. No? Oh, just because. Difference of breathing. <laughs> oh, okay. So your basal metabolic rate is just so much higher. Yep. Gotcha. Right. And that's why you need to get this stuff checked. So we've got the the website up here. There's a and again, all this stuff is 
an approximation, an estimation. The so, only way to figure it out is to figure it out. Exactly. Well, how do I do that? Play. You got to get you got to get yourself to a starting point and then yep. adjust from there. Get your basal metabolic rate. Start there. Yeah, so I'm going to do put, it for two, weigh yourself every Friday for two weeks. If the scale moves up or down, you adjust accordingly based on what your goals are. It's that simple. It's exactly. going to take you three months to figure it out, but you're going to figure it out. Yep, and we're going to go through that. So I'm entering my numbers, and it's asking for whether my gender, age, weight, height, activity level, and body fat percentage. And then it spits out a number. And, you know, this is going to be 5'8. Is that your daughter? <laughs> That's me, bro. That's me, bro. <laughs> Come on. Five foot eight, oh, bro. Oh, wait. Yeah, 49. Yeah, that's me. So it says. I'm oh, just me- messing with you. I can take it. Sure. All right. So it says for maintenance calories, based on your stats, the best estimate for your maintenance calories is 2637 calories per day using the catch McArdle formula, which is widely known to be the most accurate when body fat is provided. So that was with me putting the 21% body fat, which was my last hydrostatic. Yeah, which is weighing. probably a, a, a tish and then, high, but. And then it's got a, a range here too. So it says my basal metabolic rate is 1701. Now the funny thing was when on the in body, it had like 1780 or something. So that's, that's actually pretty damn close. That's pretty Pretty damn close. Yeah. So when you take all these data points, if you go get the in body, you know. That's three almonds. The hydrostatic. What's that? That's three almonds. The difference between. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Exactly. So you collect all these data points, and if they happen to be fairly close to each other, then you know you're pretty close on the right track. Right. So it's got my basal metabolic rate is 1701. Mine was 1780 from the hydrostatic weighing. And then your activity level is added onto that. Okay. So this is the hard part. I put moderate exercise. It has me at 2,637 calories is maintenance. Basically stating if I eat 2,637 calories a day, I will maintain the level of body fat to lean muscle mass ratio that I have currently. The scale will probably stay the same, right? Do me. Okay, so well, let's. Just, I just want to see how accurate it is because I have my Garmin stuff, so I want to. We'll do that, but let's let's take it yep. through first now. So let's say I had my number with moderate exercise because I work out three times a week, uh, so I just put moderate. It, let's say my, but my goal is to lean out, right? I want to drop body fat, so I want to sure. operate in a deficit. Yep. Okay. Now we talked about this a few episodes ago. You, your basic recommendation, and I've seen different figures, but anywhere from like two to. 600 calories a, a day under that maintenance level. 500 is a pound. 500 is a, would be a pound a week. Yep. So let's say I ate 2,137 calories a day. I should lose a pound a week of fat mm-hmm. as long as, and they got to qualify this because as long as that food quality is the right thing and as long as I maintain that exercise. Especially too. if you have a leaky gut. <laughs> right, exactly. I really don't want to have that, whatever the hell it is. Actual yeah. particles. I don't think you know. I, exactly. You wouldn't. Well, there is oh, – we don't want to get into it, but if you read that article, it talks about there's a lot of, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, oh, a lot, of, a lot right, of that kind of right. stuff yeah. is uh, indicative the of – shits for no reason. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> which I don't have any of those symptoms, so knock on wood, baby. Well, that's because you're carnivore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So, so let's take it through my full example here. So, if I maintenance level would be twenty six thirty seven. So, your recommendation would be eat twenty one thirty seven a day, and that's five hundred calories a deficit a day. That mm-hmm. times seven is thirty five hundred calories a week. That's one pound of fat loss per week. If I was to do that, so th- to me, this would be a good starting point because based on my in body numbers and this. TDEE calculator, they're both pretty close. So what I would do is do this, weigh myself, like you said, tr- maybe track it every day, but like once a week, see if the scale is moved with my in maintaining my activity level. And I should see body fat dropping using your the tape measure, your eyes, to a lesser extent, the scale. You should. Right. The problem... Comes tell, me, in. tell me what I said wrong here. You didn't say anything wrong. Uh, damn and right. You no. You 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 nailed it. Thank you. 
you can. And doff your hat too. The uh, the problem comes in is the, the out's not the problem. The end's the problem. So where you run into a problem is, okay, let's just say we agreed upon 2100 Yep. That's going to be my target. Yeah. To operate in a deficit. Yep. So what's that? Right. Well, we're going to get into that. That's okay. the end. That's, that's the hard that's part. That's going to be the end of this is we're going to talk about exactly how to hit those targets. But let's let's take through a couple more examples. So let's do Dewey here. Yeah, let's do me. Okay, you're I'm 46. Gonna, funny. Right? 47. 47. I don't, I don't way off, right? Well, I want to see if it changes. Okay, didn't didn't change the numbers based on that. And what do you weigh right now? Uh, two, two, 217. 217. And you're... Six. Six one and a half. <laughs> oh, I'll just say six one. Yeah. And you heavy exercise. I right? think so. And then what's your body fat right now, if you were to guess? Uh, eighteen. Whatever fatty. I know. Okay, Sorry. now let's see what it says for old Dewey here. Oh, thirty six forty six for maintenance. It says your basal metabolic is twenty one thirteen. With heavy exercise, it gets you up to 3646 in order to maintain. So what do you, what do you think? What what was your calculation or what is your device or your? Mine's 3600. Oh, so you're right yeah. in there. Okay. So this, yep. I'll post a link to this TDEE calculator. It's So far, it's been pretty on the money yeah. to give people a starting point. <clears throat> so, and as you'll notice, from your heavy exercise, so that takes you from 32, I was at moderate. So if I was your same weight and height and I was moderate exercise versus heavy, that's a 400 calorie difference a day. So that's pretty significant. Okay, yeah, 34. That's what I burned. Yeah. Okay, yep. So. Yes, yeah, sir, it's pretty close. Yeah, and I'm eating, oh, like 26. But <laughs> <laughs> So. That's a good starting point, you know. Use the tape measure, your eyes, an in-body scan, a hydrostatic scan. Get as many of these data points as you can. Throw them into this calculator and see how it all jives together. But obviously, you know, you've, you've pointed this out as people will wrongly estimate their activity level, right? Grossly. Well, like there's a... There's one that says athlete here. How many people just pick athlete because they think they're a stud? They've gone that elliptical twice a week. Right. They, or they, they just, check the mail. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? I played football. Most people are sedentary, unfortunately. Yep. You know, if you just work at an office job and all you do is walk to the car and walk to the office every day and get up and walk to the snack machine, that doesn't even count as light exercise. You know what I use with those people? What's that? BMR right away. Oh, yeah. That's a new target. Yeah. That's your target. Right. So if you said, I just smoke weed all day and play video games and work for like two hours, but it's all computer work. The ultimate and plant-based. <laughs> if you said, I'm a fruitarian. I'm a, I'm a weed-tarian. I would say two grand. Okay. That's your new target. Right. Okay. So now let's. But people are, that's where we got to get into the, the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is going to be when people say, 2100 I'm super sedentary and you want me to eat 2100 I'm only eating like 1600 now no you're not right no you're not you're not counting everything just like they lie or wrongly estimate on the activity level they're way the hell off on food yep and it's not always their fault well a they, lot of times they read the label and the servings scam you oh the servings are yeah. fucking evil yeah they <laughs> the, it's, they, I mean, I think I saw, I can't remember where it was, like a pack of, I don't know, M&Ms. It was like two servings. We're like, who the hell eats? Right. Who opens? A serving's a There's pack. not a resealable m and pack. A serving is a pa- <laughs> is, is one pack. I mean, right. Come on, don't, right. don't bullshit me. Or like almonds. Holy shit. Well, right. Like or I, I looked at heavy, I, was ma- I made a smoothie the other day with heavy cream, and I remember you always talking about, yeah, you get one thimble. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, on the back of the... Heavy cream, you know, nutrition facts. I mean, they have to put the shit on there legally now, but yep. they can still try to fuck you. Skew it. Oh, yeah. Because they're going to make the numbers skew in their favor as much as they can. So I think it said 40, 40 calories or 45 calories, and it said one tablespoon. Like, Jesus. And I just filled up my half my protein shake bottle. 
Oh. You know what I mean? So, right, like, how right. many freaking hundreds of calories was that? You couldn't probably just shouldn't have ate until the next day. <laughs> exactly. So you can really go over so easy. So, you know, it's funny because we did a whole episode about calories in, calories out is bullshit, you know. Well, our main point of that was it's true, but what you're eating is going to determine whether you're suffering the entire time and being healthy and maintaining muscle versus not. And here's the curveball that I you got to buy a ticket to the movie if you want to know how this works. <laughs> but twenty, let's just say that my – because I've done this. Mm-hmm. I've done the, excuse me, the experiment with myself. I can lose, I can be in a deficit or a surplus on 2,500 calories. What did you just say? <laughs> I can be in a deficit New York or a surplus. Get a rope. On 2,500 calories. Get out of here. Get out of here, David Blaine. <laughs> By manipulating the macros. You some kind of magician. Yep. Okay, well, I, I don't just underst- play the shell game with the macro. I don't understand that, and that sounds way too confusing for people, <laughs> including I this said, guy. We're not going down the rabbit hole. We're not going down the rabbit hole. But let's make the overall point. This is where the whole gummy worms thing comes in. Ex- okay. Bingo. You told me I need to, or my, my target was 2,100, mm-hmm. right? To operate in a deficit. If I ate 2,100 calories of gummy bears, I would drop weight. True. Sure. But would I be healthy? Would I maintain lean muscle mass? No, your hair and teeth would fall out. Exactly. <laughs> and then you'd lose all your muscle. Right. But hey, you'd look ripped. Right. So you have to pay, use like I'd look foundation so ri- to cover up the bags under your eyes. I'd look so ripped that Sally Struthers would be trying to get people to send to money to you. save me. <laughs> <laughs> this once thriving 49 year old. <laughs> oh, dude. So. <laughs> That that the quality of food is the thing. Almost quality a, as quantity. important o, o, as the amount of calories is. What are those calories cons- made of? Yep. And <clears throat> so, okay, let's talk about three different types of people who you know I call it Joe Cubicle. So that's kind of me. My no, goal is to you're not Joe Cubicle. Well, I, oh, I was. Okay. So I'm trying Fair to enough. Change, you know, that's where I started. Yeah. So my goal is to reduce waist circumference. Get Sorry, leaner. I'm very squirmy. My back yeah, no, is really right. bothering me. That's right. <laughs> um, People that, that are actually watching, which there are some. There are some. I think yep. it's weird, but. Um, <laughs> Just don't think about it. I. Uh, they're wondering, does he get a shit? Or <laughs> no, <laughs> my back is just a little tight today. That's all right. So Job Cubicle, that's kind of me. That's my example. Then we got Larry Lifter. That's kind of you, right? You're trying to. Put on muscle. I like to say I'm Larry and Larry and Mary. Yeah, and then Mary I'm Marathon. The hybrid. Okay, so let's I'm talk. Try- about- well, wait, I'm trying to be the hybrid, right? I'm I'm Larry. Well, let's talk about the the three different types of people here. Some and some examples of maintenance versus deficit versus surplus. So, if your goal is to drop body fat and get leaner, you have to operate in a deficit. That's just the way it is. That's where the calories in, calories out thing is true. And and what they are. And what they are is, again, just as if not more important than that. Now, let's say you're Larry Lifter. You're trying to pack on size. You want to enter a bodybuilding physique competition or something, and you want to you, – you need your biceps to be X amount of inches around bigger than they are now. That person can't operate in a deficit and grow their biceps. No. It's impossible. They have to operate in a surplus. So that's why you see, I was watching some Mr. Olympia videos the other day. Yeah. Those guys, oh my God. And strong, right? Men, like we talked about the other day. Right. You know, in order to get, because muscle size equals strength. You know, the more muscle fiber you have in your body, eh. you know, well, overall. Look at all technical. There's a correlate. It, exactly. It doesn't equal. Right. Right. Well, it's not causation. Well, the reason, he, you know, Eddie Hall is, is eating so many calories is because he wants to be as strong as possible and he has to maintain that for sure. of, of mass. For sure. Have you seen those guys now? Well, you said he he's lost. Thor, he's too. Dropped some Thor's too. like ripped. The Thornson guy? Yeah. The, the, the mountain? The mountain. Wow. No, I haven't seen yeah, him he's, recently, but. He's, oh, it's freaky. But I was watching some Mr. And, okay, you got the Strongman, then you got the Mr. Olympia, and those guys are like, you know, the 3% body, body fat. Yeah. But huge, gigantic mass monsters. They're the Strongman guys with no fat. Exactly. Yep. That's what they are. Yeah. Because aesthetically, they, it's important for them. They have to be aesthetically pleasing. So, be shredded. But if you're trying to, you know, 
gain a huge muscle, you can't operate in a deficit. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do at the very end because they're just cutting to, With, to lean out. But, and they still lose muscle. But how did they get that the, muscle so big in the first place? Yeah, eating the shit yeah. out of it. Operate in a surplus. But what they ate yep. was so, important. So really, you know, and if you're at the perfect body fat and you like the amount of muscle on you, then you're at maintenance, right? So then you're eating the same calories that you're burning per day because you don't want to drop weight or gain weight. So which you got to determine which one of those are you? Somebody you, are you, is your goal to preferably uh, let somebody else determine which one you are. You're, so you're saying like uh, it's risky for people to figure the shit out on their own. It is because yeah. you don't you think you're Larry Lifter. You, well, you, and you're wrong about and, how much you're eating, and you're wrong about you're, how, your activity. You, or you think you're Mary Marathoner, right? Because you speed walk at the mall. Let's talk about but you're not. Let's talk you're about you're Joe Cubicle. Let's talk about an endurance athlete. What would they do different? Eat everything that doesn't move. Right, including carbs and things oh, that we normally yeah, are telling people to stay gummy away bears. from. Yeah, right. they, yeah they they're, just, they're running 100 miles a week. Right, so they're burning way more calories. So somebody who's an endurance athlete can get Like by. Cameron Haynes, he runs a marathon every day. That's insane. That's 26.2 miles a, if for those in Rio Linda. Yeah, that's insanity. Anyway, you slice it. Um but yeah, you're right. I mean, that Mary Marathoner, if she's a marathoner, mm -hmm. I'm training for the half marathon in September. I ain't no Mary Marathoner. Right. <laughs> not no. even close. And she also wouldn't eat that stuff when she's not actively but she performing always those. But she always is. She's always training. There's right. no off season. For right. Her. So the, the guy that runs a marathon Mary. a day, he could probably eat anything that's not nailed down. And he does. And something that's mostly elk. Because right. when he's not running 26.2 miles every day, he's shooting his bow and killing animals. And So let's talk about... not No longer being a Navy SEAL. Right. Yeah, that's pretty cool, dude. Pretty cool, man. So let's talk about how to hit the target. Okay, let's say you got your... I have my, let's say my goal was a 2100. Your goal was your 3100, 30, you know? Cause if, well, are you trying to operate in a deficit? Yeah. Okay, so if you're... Your maintenance was 36. You're going to operate, at, operate in a deficit at 3,100 calories. I'm at 2,100. So how do we hit those? How do we hit those uh, calories? So what do you tell people? You know, they say, well, I don't know. How do I figure that out? Uh, do you literally use one of these? Again. Secret sauce again. Like I use, a, I go to um, go, Rain Man It Up. Go to Dolph, my fitness pal. No, uh, Fat Secret. Fat secret, okay. Yep. This is the one I use. Oops. I'll call it tie. It's S E C, not C crat. <laughs> Calorie counter by fat secret? Yeah, uh, that's gonna go to the play store. Go down. Go down, go down. There, yep. there okay. you go. Your key to success. Uh okay. is there well, I here I can just sign up real quick. Yeah, but anyways, they're all just different versions of the mousetrap. So you like this one? Yeah, I like this one because it has a professional feature where if you're my client and you log in with this and then you record your food for the day, next tomorrow morning, I'll get an overview or review Ooh, of everything I like that. you did. Yep. That's good. Even if if you have a coach or if you have like an accountability partner or husband and wife can like keep each other kind of oh, and they do honest, you know, which is cool. So you're saying basically full on track it. Yep. So you're saying I ate two eggs for breakfast, enter two eggs in. And it'll Absolutely. And it'll boom, it'll spit out an amount of calories. I ate this yep. protein smoothie with this much heavy cream or whatever. Yep. And I bet if people do that, they're gonna be really, really surprised. Probably uh, one way or the other, but I'm guessing most people are surprised at how many more calories they had than they thought. Right, oh, right. Absolutely. Is that typically what you found? Well, here's what I usually do. Here's what I typically do. Ah, screw it. I can't sign in. I was just going to show you the screen. Sure. Uh, we can – I don't know if you can put screenshots in the notes. Or yeah, whatever, I can. Yeah. Anyways, here's what I do. Josh, you just hired me. Mm -hmm. Download this app. Make That's me your coach. Yep. And then it's going to send me a report every morning I'm, when I'm eating nothing, <laughs> when I'm drinking my coffee. <laughs> I'll look at your report and I'll look at your overview. And it's going to break down macros, micros, potassium, sodium, magnesium, everything. It, it, whatever I need to see, I'm going to be able to see it. So what I do with you the first 14, 10 to 14 days is I say, 
carry on. Do as exactly as you normally would do before we even started talking. So you want to get a bef- kind of a before. Yeah, I want to get a baseline. It's not how they were operating, but it's not accurate. So I still have to add five to ten percent to that. Yeah, because they, they know, know I'm watching. Yeah, what's that called? The something effect when the fact that they're, the experiment is even happening and they're being observed alters the yeah, uh, yeah almost like a placebo kind of yeah but, right. I forget the name but there's a yeah. term for that when somebody's yep. aware of them being studied then they behave differently correct yeah so what I do is I um, sorry um, what I do is I say don't you change don't carry anything. on just eat it is normal eat, eat normal then don't you add the on thing. some then I add the vegetables <laughs> remember the leaky oh, yeah, gut. Yeah. Yep, yep. So now I add plants. Okay. So depending on your goals and your current body comp and your current BMR and your current state. Yep. Depends on the ratio of plants to carbs or the plants to fruit. Right. But I add a bunch of plants and keep doing what you're doing. So if they're eating pizza and beer and shit. Don't care. Just, just Record it. Just, but okay. don't fucking lie to me. Right. Just, just put it in there. You're not, the only wrong answer <laughs> is the one that didn't happen. Just, yeah, because... <laughs> You're only hurting yourself. Right. If they yeah. bullshit you. And I'm not here to judge you. Right. We're here to actually yeah. do something about it. Right. Yeah. So just challenge yourself. Say, what would I normally eat today? And I'm going to eat that. But first, I'm going to get my vet, my plants in. Right. So plants, what we're doing there is we're, re- we're resetting that gut microbiome. And if they're eating that first, then there's less room for pizza at the end. If they're, like you said, if you hand somebody a potato, you're not eating a bunch of pizza after you wolf down a right. whole potato. Right, right. But usually what happens is they don't meet their plant goal, but they eat what they used to be eating. Yep. But the whole point is to create intuitive mindset. So you're like, you get used to recording, you get yeah. used to, you know, you get used to the process. Because what I want you to do is I don't want you to go, oh, I've never done this and I'm scanning barcode labels and I'm entering pancakes and bacon and Tomato, how did I have two tomatoes? Well, there was tomatoes in it. I don't know how many there was. Right. And on top of that, put you in a 500 calorie deficit. Right. What yeah. a bunch of bullshit stress. Right. So for the, like I said, the first 10 it's to two weeks. People. Yeah. Let's just record. Just, let's just learn how just to record. Just get them in the rhythm. Yep. Yep. Just get them used to doing that every single day without the added stress of having to count. Where, where do you find, like, the what's the average amount people are consuming calorically per day when they're just eating balls out? Like, just a random figure. Is it, like, the 2,500? What am I finding, or what do I think? Well, just what you've seen, and then if you add on Because I still bit. don't think they put everything in there. <laughs> well, it's tough. I mean, to well, just remember to do it, even. Because I'll go, Josh... I'm looking at your your report from yesterday. Excuse me. It says you went to um, Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm. Busted. So you got the buffalo or that you got the spicy garlic traditional. Great. Says here you had ten wings. Awesome. Not a big dipping sauce guy. Oh yeah, I love blue cheese. Where the fuck's that? <laughs> it's like two hundred calories. Where the fuck's that? <laughs> Well, I didn't, it's a condiment. If it goes in your mouth, right. it goes in the app. Yeah, and how much, if you ate 10 wings There's with five ranch, calories in a fucking piece of gum. Yeah. I mean, if it the, goes in your mouth. Yeah, that ranch. Right. A ranch is especially calorie dense. Right, right. And two yeah. or three of those. Oh, yeah. If you go through a dozen wings, you're having, you're you're not two doing right with one container. Yeah. And then what's that at? It's cumulative throughout it's the day. It's 250 calories. Yeah. So there, there's your difference between between being in a maintenance deficit. and a deficit. Right. Or maintenance just and the, a surplus. Just the sauces. Just the, yeah. That's for people that have no idea of how far off they are when they're just yep. guessing. Yep. So when I see <clears throat> Sarah, that's not a real person. Mm-hmm. When I see Sarah at 2,300 calories, Sarah's probably at 3,300. Well, you think it's that? Thing? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, I didn't know I had to add the 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 creamer, oh, my coffee. Yeah, right. What do you mean you didn't? It's yep. cream. It went in your mouth. It's 400 calories. So you found after the adaptation period of getting him used to tracking, then then can you trust the numbers after that, or you just never trust the numbers? Do you always assume that they're under? Depends on the client. Okay. Depends on the client. The people who are the people then, who are super studious. Yeah. And and super super disciplined. Yeah. 
they're a little more accurate. Right. Most of the time where I get, where I run into, it's not, well, I didn't put my ranch in there. Yeah. Most of the time it's, oh, I went to lunch with Josh and we went to B-dubs and I left my phone in the car. Oh, I forgot. So yeah. I got, I forgot to put those wings in. Or you're doing it by memory later. Yep. And that's when you start to forget the ranch and yep. the, the 20 fries you grabbed off your buddies, even though you didn't order them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the, what the, and everyone and what's so much fun to watch is the evolution of the clients. The clients they they evolve in the sense of they find their own hacks. Yeah. Like I got one guy right now who puts everything he's going to eat for the day in the morning. Oh, and then he just follows that. And then he just way. follows it down, and when it's gone, <laughs> he's done. Right, because he knows he's got his twenty one hundred or whatever. Yep. So if he pre programs it, then it's just a it's just instructions. Right. No, that's a great idea. Yeah, it is. I like that. And he's crushing it. Because what what'll happen Jake. is Yeah, that's awesome. Because otherwise what'll happen is you'll eat what you want and then all of a sudden you're like ran out of calories and it's not even supper yet. Right. Then you're like, now what? I guess I'm fasting or yep. you fuck up and go over. Well you no fasting's not an option. They're just well, they're gonna right. eat more. But they're gonna go over, yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah, that's that's a, that's a really good hack. I like that. Um, <clears throat> so again, it's you know about the quant the quality of the food you're putting in. So, you know, after you get them on the adaptation period, and then you're talking about you know the macros, and you're doing a typically kind of a ketogenic type boot camps, right? So you're you're doing kind yeah, of low carb, yeah, all, so, all sorts of different boot camps, low carb keto. I'm in it, it, for your average person. You know, that's typically what. For the for the person who comes to me significantly overweight, you be prepared to be low carb. Yeah, it just works. It just it needs to happen. It and needs to happen because I need you being comfortable yeah. with not eating very much. Right. And I heard another thing on a podcast today. A doctor was saying, of the three macronutrients, you know, protein, fat, and carbs, carbs are the only one that's non essential. D- Carbs are not essential. Not life. essential. Exactly. Yep. So if you prioritize the protein and fat in some ratio, you know, fiber is actually more essential than carbs. Right. And then, well, and then I think. In, ke- in keto, you know, they prioritize the fat first and then the protein second and carbs are really tiny. And even when I, on pedo, uh, on pedo, <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> you just thought of the pedo diet. All right. I like that. Let's run with it. It's protein that gets into ketosis. Right. Protein heavy. Right, there you go. I like it. I'm in. Um, no, but when, even when the keto diet, when helping people navigate through the keto diet, I changed my approach. My approach used to be always fat, must get your fat, 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 70 to 75% fat. Right. And then some protein and very little carbs. Yep. Now I say, here's your carb target. I need you to hit this carbohydrate target. Mm. If they hit that, everything else takes care of itself. So even if it's only 10 or 20 grams a day or whatever, it, some really It needs to be 10 or 20. Yeah. If it's 10 or 20, the amount of gluconeogenesis that takes place because of maybe a little bit of increased protein mm-hmm. doesn't offset the carbs. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really upset the apple cart too much mm-hmm. enough to kick them out of ketosis. Mm. Okay. So I don't think I invented that, but I might have. Right. I like it. So let's talk about, you know, obviously you can't eat the gummy bears. You can't eat whatever you want. You got to figure out the macros, and that depends on your goals too and what type of diet you're following, if you're carnivore, keto, or even vegan, mm-hmm. or, you know, something. <laughs> keep gummy bears unless they're from Denver. <laughs> right. That's a different Don't show. Trust <laughs> us. Uh, I'm a potitarian, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, my approach is basically eating mostly meat. So it's kind of a, but it really depends on what type of meat. Like we're listening, talking about Ted Naiman, he prioritizes, prioritizes protein above all else. Whereas you know Sean Baker saying eat ribeyes because they have the most marbling and you know it's the highest fat because they're the goodest, the goodest. <laughs> yes, but because of the fat to protein ratio, it's higher fat. You know, and Ted Naiman's like, no, eat watering. eat the least you know fatty cuts eat the leanest meats and get the protein, not the fat, lower the fat. You know why he says eat the leanest cuts? And I haven't even started his book yet, but I know the answer. Because it's not as many calories. Uh, exactly. There's so it's, many it's calories in fat. Way to operate in caloric deficit. Yep. And he's super lean. Again, so, you know, Sean Baker, Ted Naiman, you could 
Paul Saladino, you could emulate any of these guys because they're all nailing it. Right. You know, so they all got there. And yep. the overarching theme is they're all lean. They all have small bellies, circumference, you know, and that's. And it, people are like, well, I got to listen to you because you're lean uh, and a doctor. But yeah, <laughs> but you do. Almost more because they're lean. I'd rather listen to a lean guy who's figured it out over a, a fat doctor. You know what I mean? Mm, you're not wrong. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, I, because, you know, my whole thing is I want to emulate people who have done it. So show me the guy that's climbed climbed Everest and okay, how do you climb Everest? You've done it. You know, not some professor who theoretically the other thing could teach you how to climb Everest. Especially when it comes to nutrition coaching. The other thing is the per, the perception of a nutrition coach that isn't like that fit. Mm-hmm. Oh, but this is my passion. Is it? <laughs> Well, yeah. Then how come you not? <laughs> is it your passion? If it if you're if it's your passion, you should be an example. Should be important to you. Yeah, exactly. If 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 you're not there, you should be on your way at least. Right. You know, not like the Minister of Health in Belgium was gigantic, gigantic monster. You know. Yeah, public health is not her passion. <laughs> Obviously not. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, qu- food quality is the the hugest thing. So let's talk about. Okay, you're going along. Um, you know, you, you're tracking your calories, you're using the scale, the in-body scans, the tape measure, your eyes, all these items to measure your progress. Instagram. What do you do? How do you adjust? What do you do? You're a few weeks in. Simple. You cut until the scale um, starts dropping. And then once you reach the... So you're saying reduce the cal- caloric amount oh, 100 per day. Cal- 100 calories. Yep. Okay. 100 at a time. Yep. Yep, 100 at a time per week. Don't get crazy. Right. And it's simple. Once you meet your goal, start adding. Once you get to um, zero, the basis of zero, there's like a baseline. Mm-hmm. Once you get back to that, stop. So you're saying so cut, hundred cut until your body fat is reduced to where you want it, lean-wise. Yep. Then add calories back in slowly until you until see the maintenance. Until you see the, ma- the scale... You're not going to die and get, nail it. So you're going to go it, yeah. 100, 100, 100. Shit, I'm over. It's a moving target. It is. So drop it back and then don't get so caught up. Yeah. Don't live for that scale going, oh, I got to drop 100. I got to drop 75. I got to drop 50. Yeah. All this stuff takes time. It does. It's, and it takes a long time to dial it in. Show. But guess where you end up getting? You end up getting, and I was explaining to this to the guy yesterday. Leaner. You end, I mean, you end up getting really lean. You look good naked. Mm-hmm. But- when you, hey, easy. When, <laughs> when you get super lean with vast amounts of muscle, mm-hmm. you have so much more room for error. Right. When you go on vacation or yep. everyone's like, well, you're living like a freak and you're six pack and I don't want to live like that. When I go on vacation, I want to enjoy it. You know what? Let's go on vacation. Let's you and I have an eating contest and let's see who gains more weight when we <laughs> yeah. come back from vacation. Right. Because the lean muscle mass is yeah, burning me the with calories. with my 3,000 calories yeah. metabolic, basal metabolic basal rate, rate. or basal rate yeah. or yours at 1,600. Right. Because that lean muscle mass is burning calories while you're sitting on the beach doing nothing. Bingo. Yeah, exactly. Well, and so I can't reverse anything I've done. No, sitting in Cancun for a week. Right, you're you're preparing yourself to naturally overcome those things without any effort. Yep, it just happens while you're while exactly. you're sitting there, and just but it get, takes fucking forever. Oh yeah, to get there. Yeah, it takes a combination of eating perfectly, not perfectly. Sorry, that's yeah. that was hyperbole. Eating really well, eating really eating right, and busting your ass in the gym. Yes. Resistance heavy, training, lifting heavy, weights. Heavy weights. Yeah, you got to build muscle. And, and like we said, that's the key to longevity. It's you know having that lean muscle mass. And speaking of, you know, I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about, you know, old people basically, you know, as they're, because your muscle mass will decrease on its own. Oh, yeah. It's disappearing. You start withering away. That's, you know what the that's scientific term is for that? Atrophy. Dying. Like, dying, yeah, right. <laughs> you're, yeah. You're dying. And that's going to happen, so you have to fight against that. Yep. So you can't just like say, "Well, I'm going to eat maintenance, you know, and not exercise." You still have to exercise because as you get older, that lean muscle mass is going to go away. 
So you have to fight to maintain as much as you can. I was, I was watching uh, on YouTube the other day. I saw some 70-year-old dude deadlifting. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. and Good for him. I give him way better odds than most 70-year-olds. For sure. For longevity and just overall vitality. But my grandpa smoked every day and ate bacon and cookies and <laughs> shut up i hate that those stupid outlier stories some just stop some people some people won the genetic lottery you're not that guy you're not that guy so just must work work yeah exactly but i just love the spirit because a lot of times when people oh. get older they give up yep they go well older dude i know 28 year olds are <laughs> giving up <laughs> yeah but especially you right. know when they yeah. know, retirement age or whatever then they're in the rocking chair and oh it's like, well, it was a good run. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> like you say, walk into the mail is is the exercise they get. Right. I mean, you should still be trying to, like I said, not necessarily get huge, but you're just trying to maintain that lean muscle mass. Dude, there's a whole section on the CrossFit Far on the CrossFit not for CrossFit Fargo on the CrossFit dot com website. Yep. For training in your home, and it's all people that are geriatric and they're oh, like okay. listen like milk jugs and. Right? It's badass. Yeah. It's like just restores your faith in humanity. That's freaking awesome. And the everyone makes jokes about the set because it's like an old 70s couch that every family <laughs> had growing up. The Davenport? Yep. <laughs> the Davenport. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. With the stinky cushions. So, yeah. So understand this is a marathon, right? It's not – you're not going to get to your – this That's is the why people, I sw- the people that start to do the bikini thing, you know, in like May, like, well, bikini season's a month away. Time to time to drop this fifty pounds. We should have been talking in the last May. Exactly. Yeah, it's gonna take. But a guess long what? Time. This May is. This May is next year's last May. <laughs> right. So, yeah. hit me up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, it's like you said, it's a marathon pun, and it's a lifestyle. Absolutely pun intended. It's a marathon, right? Not a sprint. That's why I recently switched my pricing structure for my services mm. from monthly to quarterly. Oh, okay. Just to, so I can't have, get shit done with you in 30 have days. Have more time with people? I'm just not going to get anything done. Right. People are like, uh, this isn't working. Dude, it's like day 20. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to commit. It's, dude, it's day 20. Six days ago, I was still letting you eat whatever you wanted. <laughs> right. And it's not working? Exactly. <sighs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, hopefully that wasn't too confusing for people, but basically. That was way more fun than I thought. Yeah, the moral of the story is you have to track. You got to know. You got to know what's going in and what's going out. I mean, that's the only way you can adjust. You can't do it just by feel. But I would bet that like the Mr. Olympia and those guys that have been doing this forever, they don't need to enter the stuff into their My Fitness Palette. Oh, they're all intuitive. He's yeah. like one egg, this many calories, one scoop of this, this many. He knows in his head intuitively where he needs to be. That's that's me now. Yeah, right. I, so I, you can I, get to the point where you don't have to religiously enter stuff and it's not annoying. No, I don't sit and do, 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 do all day long. Right. But if I go out to eat for a different restaurant, we went out to eat some with some really good friends last Saturday at night. And um, I had a couple stuff I had to go like this one underneath the table because I'm not supposed to have my phone. <laughs> so I'm like punching in some stuff and I'm like, oh, yeah, I could probably have a couple more bites of that just to see where yeah you didn't yeah. know the caloric amount yeah. of whatever you're eating but yeah it was like yeah. some exotic goat cheese or some shit and it was really good and i wanted more <laughs> exactly all right so that's kind of the the content for this week on that so we've got any qu- questions for clarifications reach out info at fit com. let's before we get into yep um the artist formerly known as Fat Josh. <laughs> uh, let's tease next week. Oh, yeah. So I'm pretty geeked about it. Okay. So, again, like we always talk about, we do most of our episodes on nutrition because that is 80% of the battle. Um, and then the rest is on fitness and exercise. So this next week we're going to cover, not because I was trying to, since I got my squat rack, I was just trying to figure out well, how do I use this? What what am I supposed to, what should I be doing? And I discovered this thing called the five big lifts. Yep. So we're going to uh, talk about what those are, and we're going to film them actually this weekend. Yeah, it's some demos. You have videos for each lift and how to execute, so that's going to be kind of fun. Because some of those lifts, like the, like the deadlift, people are like, deadlift, just pick it up. Mm. The deadlift and the back squat, are the setup and the technique are – Almost as difficult as the golf swing. Right. And the, which is something people spend their entire lives trying to perfect. <laughs> right. Yeah. People 
spend their entire lives trying to perfect these lifts too. And plus deadlift is one of those ones where if you fuck up, you lights out, destroy your back. It's over for I mean, months. Yeah. I'm still, that's why I'm squirming in this chair is because of deadlift. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's not something to mess around with. Yeah. So that'll be very cool. Um, we'll have those videos on YouTube and stuff. So now let's get into how fat is Josh? Pretty fat. All righty. How fat was Josh? Yeah, um, yep. I dropped another 1.2. 171 so. from 194. Yep, Dude, so that's I, legit. I know. It impresses me every time you pull that up. 22.8 pounds down, five. Well, that's actually, my, gear that's up the my, tape because measure that's my, my vest. Real quick. <laughs> right. Well, you know, you know, okay. And for people on YouTube, and I recommend everybody checking out the YouTube channel, I have all my measurements here, my body or, fat or percentage. Don't. Waist inches, arm inches, thigh inches. I also added push-ups that I can do unbroken and chin-ups that I can do unbroken. I started at 30 push-ups. Now I'm at 45 that I can do unbroken. And when I started uh, back in January, I could do six chin-ups. Now I can do 12. And I almost did 13 this morning. Couldn't quite eke it out. But progressive overload, I'm making I'm making progress. So, And one of the, oh, what the main point I was going to say was because I'm lighter. Right? Doing a chin-up sure. is – much easier if you drop 22 pounds because and i'll tell i'll tell anybody you know like you said throw a 22 pound weight on your back and then see how many chin-ups you can do then yeah try do do 100 pull-ups with your vest on so we're doing the old above the belly button i'll let you determine that yeah i think it's there 35 and a half. All right. Another quarter inch down, bitches. And, you know, we started this podcast. Ow! <laughs> God damn it. Why is personal injury so hilarious? That, that tape measure came back and bite me right in the hand. Okay, so down another quarter inch. So I've lost six inches around the waist. I'm an inch and a half away from the perfect... Ratio Physique. of, <laughs> yeah, well, at least the perfect uh, safe ratio of, remember we said the waist circumference to height in inches should be at least 0.5. And since my height is 68, I should be 34 uh, waist circumference in order to be considered not at risk. So I'm getting, I'm creeping up on that real close. So move, move in the right direction and, you know, it's been actually it's four fourteen today. We started this podcast one fourteen. So it's been three months. Uh, so this is definitely no sprint. Even though you know, I think twenty two point eight pounds and six inches in the waist is pretty damn good in three months. In twelve weeks. Yeah, exactly. And a body fat percentage reduction of eleven point four percent, as far as you know. And I think that number's crept down lower too because yep. the, when I measured that, that was. Back in three, that was over a month ago. So I would probably have to go in and get rechecked. I, it's it, it is because with the amount of lifting you're doing and the deficit that you're maintaining, there's no way that you've lost that much weight and not gained muscle. Exactly. So, so you've lost more fat than what right. the progress. And my clothes indicated. say that. I mean, this is a small. Like I have this shirt in medium. <laughs> medium. I have well, I have medium, and I used to not be able to wear the smalls. Really? Yeah, because my gut would be hanging out. You know. Oh yeah. Now. Now I can, and it fits, you know, so I'm, I'm getting, getting, uh, you know, it's losing, I'm losing size in all the right places. When I lean out, there is, um, there's no doubt when you get lean and mm -hmm. trim and you have some muscle yep. that how much more cocksure a guy is with a, <laughs> with a, with a smaller shirt on. Oh Yeah. Well, because what's the fir first thing to jut out is your freaking gut right. when you're overweight. Yep. So, you know, you, you, you've all seen the guys, you know, where they got the shirt can't even, like, reach the belt. Right, you know, right, right. The well, then they – and then uh, – I hate trying to I be mean, PC. It takes so much effort. No. <laughs> yeah, we did a whole episode called Fat Acceptance. No. So right. Ahead, well, I mean – Let her fly. There, when you – as a male – in today's society, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is for our female listeners, mm -hmm. you guys are, 
You guys are objectified. I can see your brain walking the tightrope. Oh, here. Jesus. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. If um, it's horrible, I'll delete it. With, <laughs> no, it, it'll never be that bad. <laughs> um, no, but they're objectified when they make eye contact with a male who will unintentionally or intentionally or reactionarily look down at their breasts. <laughs> they it happens mm -hmm. and and every female knows that oh, they their shirts saying my eyes are up here right for us it's the gut oh when you meet a female so the first thing they do is look down at your gut do you think that's a way of assessing you for a potential mate for 100 like percent evolutionarily is. like 100 percent like is, is this guy fit and yep. capable of defending my cave there's articles that, and there's studies that go into the evolutionary aspect. The, you know what the first thing they look at is? Height? Shoulders. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, height. I mean, that's, yeah, from a distance. Yeah. But once up close, shoulders. Right. Abs. Shoulder width, yep. And then, well, we can't mention the other one on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Right. Yeah, because the- a No, male... no, arms. It was arms and then, oh, okay. and then the unmentionables. Right, because a male that can defend a female and their offspring is somebody with broader shoulders yep. and a, lean, a smaller waist. Right. You know, and they're well, fertile. Sm smaller waist, what does that indicate? Yeah. Fitness. He's going to fucking live longer. Right, exactly. <laughs> just evolutionarily, they just know it instinctively. Yep. Even when they were clubbing people over the heads and dragging them back to the cave, yep. they knew it instinctively because those are the people that survived. And that's why, and this is where the other thing that a lot of my... Male counterparts will get mad about, but the females listening will nod their heads. Yes, mm -hmm. is that's why Thunder Down Under sells out every time they have a show. <laughs> yeah. And women don't just line up outside the mechanic's garage <laughs> or watching the plumber bend over with his butt crack. Right. Because yeah, those guys have broad shoulders and lean and lean small waists. It's not rocket science. Yep. <laughs> hey. The dad bod is not a thing. Well, yeah, and any wives that are saying, oh, I love the dad bod, it's cute. That's just because they're just being nice to their husbands. Of course they that's are. A, that's how they're, that is. I'd prefer a dad bod over a ripped buff guy. Well, yeah, because you're insecure and you don't want that guy to leave. Well, that's a good point there. Yeah, they don't actually prefer it attractive-wise. No, they, they like, like the security. Said, the security because that guy's not going to be – other females are not going to be chasing the, the dad bod guy. Right, right. Oh, we're getting deep. That's on this a one. whole other show. That is, and that is. I don't even know if I want to do it because everybody be pissed <laughs> off at me. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, you know, it's all, no, the it's dudes, all, the women won't be mad. Well, it's all evolution. the women will just go. Mm -hmm. The way we're using it is as a way to indicate a. It's an indicator of health. These things are an indicator of health. So that's what we're chasing. It's, are you virile? It, it's right. That's. Are you able to defend your family and reproduce? And that, it's evolution. That's, it's evolution. So, you know, we yep. use those as indicators of how, what we want to emulate because those are the people that reproduced and lived the longest. So we're trying, that's what we're selection. trying to do. Right. All right. Awesome, that guys. said, we just yes. really almost squirreled there. That was a, yeah. That was a hunky, attractive, broad-shouldered <laughs> squirrel right there. Thanks for not letting me get too carried away. Because <laughs> that, that just fun... <laughs> Playful discussion yeah. turns into a rant in about five more minutes. Oh yeah, and then Dewey getting canceled. The, the dad bod rant. <laughs> All my buddies with their beer bellies are pissed off. I, I love the shirt. What does it say? It's not a six pack. It's a keg or whatever. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. The, Look at me. I'm lazy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. They just lean into it. <laughs> right. All right. Well. Send us questions. What do you think about Dewey's uh, evolutionary rant there? Send us questions to info at fitandfurious.com. Topic ideas, questions about any of the stuff we discussed today. You need more clarification. You want to hire Dewey as your coach so he, he can get your report every day and go, dude, what the hell is that shit? I'm calling no on, ranch? I'm calling on Monday. That's right. That's right. Be ready. Need somebody to spank your ass? He's the guy. Well. Uh, make sure you watch on YouTube to check out the extra shenanigans, valuable visuals, and weekly extra content. Especially like our, next week with like videos. Our, yep, our lifts. You know, watch my PRX install video of the rack up in my tiny little basement. Um, check us out anywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share. That really helps. Also, support the show. Go to FuriousMerch.com 
and check out Carnivore Keto and uh, fun shirts. Some pretty there. cool shirts on there. There's some pretty fun ones. So, all right, guys, we will see you next week. <laughs>